Good morning from Yami B T V again TikTok. I still got the lurkies, but we go marching on to part four of my series of some of the world's most toughest, hardest, strongest, um, often brutal at times, fair to say, that I ever met during my institutional stay for all those years in that that prison system and the man we talk about today is a man named John Gray. I believe that he came, he was a Glaswegian, right? Came from Scotland, about 10, 11 or 12. Moved to Manchester, Hume. Um, lived somewhere near the Bull Rings and with a witness, you know, many stories come out from Hume and the Bull Rings. Um, he would have been around that and seen that um, from the crack of dawn now. Obviously, I only met him in the Category A system while he was serving a life sentence for a murder and served over 20 years out of it, right? Um, I remember um, reading his court statements, like a lot of men used to give me their court statements to read and get my opinion on their cases, um, feeling that I had great experience of court cases and would be able to point out a few things, right? So I read his court papers and sad case but uh in reality he got he was he got his son off the case allegedly um saying no more right the kind of man that he is but what you notice in newspapers they print things the other way around sometimes a lot of bollocks sometimes um but when you know you know don't you and yeah so prior to him getting a life sentence believed to be a manchester enforcer believed to be um, even bodyguarding some famous people during this time. What's definite is that he traveled abroad as an enforcer bodyguard and had over a hundred fights, Russia, France, Vienna, Germany, Ireland, Scotland, Italy, and more and more and more and more. A hundred fights and not one defeat. A big kind of brooding man, John Gray. His face, he looks hard, if you get what I mean. Look at Lenny McLean's face, he epitomises a hard man. Well, John Gray kind of not exactly looks like um, Lenny McLean, but his face is looks really, really tough, naturally strong. Um, in When I was in jail with him, his, his fitness, clean and press, 120 over his head. Big boned, but just grabs and... It's just, it's, it's just natural, brutal, born with muscle and strength. I met a few people like that over the time, over my time, right? So he ends up in prison and I meet him. And first meetings as well, took to him. He took to me, doesn't suffer fools gladly. Um, doesn't, talk, talks to, says hello to everyone. Respected by everyone. They say that he was the big man from Manchester. Um, the ones that they talk about, the household names in, on the media and TV, Massey and all that. We liked, we, I liked Massey. But I noticed when I was in jail that all the big names that everyone talks about, when they came on the wing, they have to go, when there's problems or, you know, they're in trouble or they need a bit of help or they might want to do, they would have to go and check in with John Gray first. What does that mean to me? That means that, you know, they're normally the bosses of their own things, but they have to go there. So what does it tell us? Is that a bigger boss in that life? Not that it really means that much um, these days. Um, but even the brotherhood, the Muslim brotherhood, the brothers love John Gray. All cultures, all creeds, um, seem to, he seems to command that kind of respect from everyone. And put, wears his heart on his sleeve and looks after anyone. Sometimes I used to wonder... Uh, did it not get him in trouble? There was a time when he threw back in someone else. He threatened to break the governor's jaw in Long La. And they called, not the normal Shields and Mufti prison officers, they called an outside um, different set of Mufti forces to come and remove him from his cell. Watch him from the door. Many of us could hear all the noise. Um, they were outside about 40, 50 all like that, the governor comes and listen, John, we're going to take you down the seg and we're not going to touch you. We're just going to let you walk. I thought, wow, 
normally you just go piling in um, to go and grab people when you're standing outside there witness them come out walk and just keep walking that they never said or put a hand on him at all a little bit of the prison stuff that i saw and what do we find in common about certain of the hard men that i talk about they don't like play fighting they don't like people getting too close to them and invading their space they're like ticking time bombs waiting for you to say the wrong thing so they can react violently or they just don't want to be disrespected it's really they stuff piss me off and they, a lot of them were friends and loved me of course but you know when someone says something funny to them you just know how they're going to react right and the first one with me is there was a guy he was right murdoch right he was doing a life and I was trained, I was just got well again, I, had some, I was I was got clean and all my muscles were coming back, so I used to get a bit play fighty, um, but John Gray liked him as well, he was one, he really, like, it was one of his besties really, and Murdoch respected him, and this is when I knew what kind of man he was, we was in the cell, me and Murdoch, having a little ding dong, but I started to play fight with him and wrestle, and I threw him down on the bed, right? But he didn't take kindly for that. He was doing a life sentence as well. Dangerous man, that Murdoch, right? Uh, but physically, I, it was, I don't think he could beat me. But it don't, don't really matter. Um, he got up. John Gray was just come in the room during the messing about kind of stage. So when he got off the bed, he said, yummy. Murdoch went like that, went to reach in his pocket. And John Gray went like that, grabbed his hand, twisted it, said, oh, wait like that and I felt gutted right because Murdoch obviously is not going to fight back with John Gray but um, John Gray liked him but because he liked me more he, you know what I mean so it's my fault really but it just shows uh, where law is he loves people but when he loves you more he will definitely definitely be there for you so I felt guilty over that one play fighting again by the laundry the washing machine there's a boxer right he's a bit dig, but he could knock out loads of people right I forgot his name but he loved, he loved John Graham. I'm standing there and he's tickling John, just getting to... And John Gray's face just changed. He don't like people touching him. So he wraps him up and tries to put his head through the, the washing machine. And he keeps going, John, John, John. And he was a big geezer as well. John was pushing him through. I said, John, listen, he's playing. Don't put, you know what I mean? Too serious sometimes. And the other one was... It was a big light skin geezer. I'm not allowed to say his name, but he's absolutely massive. Um, and he called it on there, and it was a, the, the sad, worstest thing he could have done. He got absolutely annihilated right there. The best of friends now. That's why I don't want to. I don't want to talk about it. But he would freely tell you himself. Um, but he's out now. The big man John Gray. Charities turned his life around. Opening gyms. Um, he's got Mason Carter, the, um, the fighter from Gloucester, who I say is my nephew. Loads of little kids pushing him through those gyms. Um, turned his life around and probably won't ever look back. I hope to get him on the show soon. But in reality, he's probably one of the realest men that I ever met during my lifetime. He's got a heart of gold, right? But he's kind of funny. He's temperamental, right? But then loads of them men that I talk about during this series, they've got some strange... Um, um, but his loving heart, right? And there are many people that will agree with me um, that out of Manchester, I didn't see no one that really had the final say like he did in there, like that. Um, but all in all, he's, I must be the only one that can say things to him and argue backwards. You know, they won't hit me. Um, like all of them, I talk about really. Uh, but it wouldn't take off no one else. Uh, but it's a man that I really, really loved. And in some cause, they say that he was the greatest of all time um, for all that and that and that and that and that. Um, and just his presence alone was enough. But so much love and respect for the big man from Manchester.